Airtable is one of my very favorite technologies. I've used it in Discord bots. I've used it for tracking my YouTube content, but there's one really big problem I have with it, and that is doing queries against Airtable. The documentation isn't that good. I'm always fumbling around with it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you one cool tool that I use to help solve that problem. If you're new to this channel, my name is James Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And I mentioned that I've used uh, Airtable for lots of different things, for my Discord bot, for storing information that people want to share from Discord, like YouTube videos and blog posts. I use it for tracking my own content, my video, my, uh, my videos, my newsletter, that sort of stuff. And it's been absolutely fantastic. It's so valuable and so cool to use from an automation perspective from a code perspective and then from their GUI perspective. But there's one thing I really wish I could fix and that is the querying of data in Airtable. So this video is sponsored by a product called Sync Inc, which will sync your, app, your application data, your data from Airtable into a Postgres database so that you can then query Postgres using the regular SQL that you're used to. So this video is sponsored by Sync Inc. We're gonna take a look at how I synced, Sync Inc, my Airtable data to a Postgres database and how I can query it from there in Node.js. All right, so I'm on the Sync Inc homepage. You can see here, replicate Airtable to a Postgres database. It's kind of what we went through. They've got, uh, they've got a free plan. So you can sign up with the free plan just like I am and do exactly what I'm doing to make sure that you're not having to pay for anything, but still get to leverage the benefits of SQL and not having to use the query language in Airtable. So just to show you a little example here of what the querying in the Airtable looks like, I've got uh, one of my utils files. Uh, this will uh, query Airtable to get a lot of information to build out my newsletter. So some of that, dog. So some of that is getting uh, records that have been shared by people in Discord. So if we look inside of my learn, build, teach Airtable space, uh, I've got a Discord share, and this is, again, articles and videos and things that people have created in my Discord server and wanted to share so that I can include them in my newsletter and or tweet them out. So when I want to query those things, I have to use this syntax where it's capital and, and it's then in parentheses, then it's got the different things, and then false is a function, and you have to uh, surround your variable names with brackets. I like none of this makes sense to me. And my biggest pet peeve with Airtable is just that the documentation doesn't really help. They show you the really basic syntax, but don't show you how to combine in a useful way. So what we'll be able to do when we have this set up is actually use this as if it's regular SQL. So we'll get to that in a second. So let's go ahead and uh, sign in. I'm already uh, signed it, or I'm already signed up, so I can log in. You can sign up for free. We've got a link below for you to do that. Uh, hey, you must be new here. Uh, you'll be querying Airtable with SQL in no time. Let's go. So we'll need a couple of things. We'll need an API key, and then we'll need um, a base, uh, and then we'll need tables that we're gonna read from that base. So I'm gonna go and grab my uh, API key and come back and paste that in. I'll blur it out so you can't see it, and then we'll go from there. All right, so after I added my API key, it then now is showing me options for the different tables. So I wanna grab the learn, or excuse me, bases in Airtable. So I'm gonna grab the learn, build, teach base, and then I'll just grab maybe not all the tables. I don't need these test ones. So I can just grab the real ones, the Discord share and the Discord users. Now share is things that people have shared in the Discord using the Discord bot. Users are the actual users in Discord. So keeping information about them, like their Twitter handle, YouTube link, uh, stuff like that. So let's click on start syncing. And what this thing will do in just a few seconds, it's gonna grab all the data out of Airtable, put it into a Postgres database, and then it's gonna to continue to sync that. So as we add data, we'll see this in a second, add or update data in Airtable, it will propagate to this, uh, this Postgres uh, database. And notice, I'm not having to configure or deploy a Postgres database, they're taking care of all that for me. And the output of that is this, uh, this connection string stuff. So I'm gonna scroll over to a little sample here, uh, a little sample project where I've got a few things, one thing already installed. So this is a, uh, a node, JavaScript project, I've got a package.json, and I've got one dependency, and this is PG, and this is basically the Postgres library in JavaScript. So I'll have a link to this one uh, below, and you can see the getting started documentation in here. Uh, you get a client, you do a connect, and then you can send these queries, just regular SQL queries along. You can use variables like you see here, and, uh, and do that like that. So 
Um, let's go back to the source code and let's look at our app.js, which is where we're going to do our work. So to configure the client for PG, uh, you'll need the user, the host, the database, the password, and the port. And thankfully, Sync Inc. gives you all of those things. So if we go back to Sync Inc. and we look down here, we can see that we've got all this information. So I'm going to copy all of this and then let's uh, scroll over to this one. And I'm going to paste it in here so I don't have to go back and forth. So let's grab the, uh, actually, let's put it in these weird spaces. Wow, weird. Anyway, I'm going to grab the host here. So there's the host. The database is this thing here. So there's my database. The user is this one. Again, all this stuff is created for us. The port is 5432. That's a number. And then I don't know why it added these spaces when I pasted in here, but that's OK. We can get rid of them. And let's clean up all of this stuff and then add in our password. Now, you can try to copy this if you want to. I will have deleted this by the time you try it out. So whatever. Uh, but we create our new client uh, with the PG package here. And with this client, now we can send these queries. So let's say that I wanted to get, let's say select star from, uh, and let's, uh, what table do we want to look at here? I think it's discord shares. Let's start there. Let's uh, do discord share. So we want to get all the records from discord share. So I'm going to run this file with nodemon. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Uh, Nodemon will have a live reloading server, so it'll reload this file every time we save it. So we'll run Nodemon and then app.js. If you don't have Nodemon installed, it's a global package uh, from NPM, so you can do npm install dash g Nodemon. So we'll run this and we should see data, uh, which is pretty cool. So in here, uh, we can see records that are coming back. So this is all the records that are in that Discord share table. And notice that I logged out uh, the error and uh, res.rows in here. If we just do the response, it's going to give you a lot of information. Notice that restarted automatically. It's going to give you a lot of information uh, like the different fields, like the different columns in your database. So if you just want to see your data, uh, do res.rows, and that will show you just the data that you're getting back. Now, uh, what we might want to check is, hey, let's get everything from Discord share where the... Uh, where the archive, do I have an archived Boolean in here? I think I do on some of these. Yeah, archive true. So where archived is, and then uh, notice I'm using ES6 backticks in here so I can put single quotes inside. And let's say archived equals F for false. So all the records that I get back now, if I scroll down to the bottom, uh, should be archived of false and false and false and so on. So adding my SQL in here. Now the good thing is, because this is just SQL with Postgres, the documentation for writing SQL statements and doing where's and other conditions is much better than the Airtable documentation for doing their specific thing. And again, just a refresher here, like these filter by formulas and, and then parentheses and then false as a function and extra brackets around the variable name, it's just so much. It's really odd to me that that's the way it's set up. But now we get to re use regular SQL that you may or may not have experience with. If you don't, there's at least much more documentation around this than there is for Airtable. So let's say, uh, let's kind of let's kind of use this here. Let's check for things that are not archived and things that are not emailed and are emailable is true. So this is looking for records that will go in my uh, in my newsletter. So we want to say uh, and emailable equals uh, so we'll say t for true and then emailed emailed equals false so f there so let's do let's do that query and see what we get and in here uh, let's see res.rows is undefined did we get uh, error well maybe there weren't any rows that came back oh i think we actually are missing another and there's there's some sql syntax for you uh there we go now we've got how many records are in here we've got one two three, four, five, four or five records in here. Let's look at which one of these things will be unique. Let's look at where the title is this. So let's get this specific record so we can add another and on here, or we could just do that name because we just want that one record. So where the title equals this one. So this is headless ghost and next yes, pretty cool stuff. Uh, did we get this uh, where title equals we didn't close? the parentheses here. 
So now we get this one record, right? So there's that one record inside of there. It's by uh, Chris Ellis. Follow Chris Ellis if you can find from this video. Uh, and let's go and update the title in here. So this says Headless Ghost and Next.js. So let's go into Airtable and let's find this record by Chris Ellis. All right, so I found this record here, Chris Ellis, Headless Ghost and Next.js. Let's now update this to be updated. I don't know, anything, doesn't really matter. Just adding updated to the title here. Now, just to show you how this querying works, it will run this query again when I save this file. So it should save this file, query again. Hopefully we'll see that this thing is synced with our Postgres database and now we'll see the updated data. So let's do a save on here. This should refresh the query. And uh, actually, because we were searching by the title, now it didn't show anything. So now if we search by the appropriate title, which now includes uh, space dash updated. So space dash updated. Let's do that query. And now we get that record back. So that thing within seconds, maybe milliseconds, was able to replicate the data to Postgres so that we can use SQL to query this thing. And SQL is very common. It's been around for a long time. So you can find a lot of really good documentation on how to do this. Really makes a lot of sense to me. So by uh, giving uh, giving Sync Inc. access to our data here, it can replicate it. Notice when I come in here, it says uh, taking about one second to sync. So those things are taking about a second. It's doing, uh, showing you kind of with this cool animation here that that stuff is happening by the scene, behind the scenes, by the scenes. Uh, so that, that stuff is working really well. The other thing I wanna mention is this stuff is, is really read only. So we're just reading from Postgres instead of adding stuff Postgres. But one of the things that you can do, let me pull this up for, in their rights tab, they have a sync ink proxy. And what this means is you can continue to write to Airtable in the exact way that you would expect, but you change the URL or you prefend, pre, prefend, prefix the URL with proxy.syncinc.so. So what this becomes is if you were using like the Airtable package in JavaScript, instead of having your endpoint be api.airtable.com, you prefix that with proxy.syncinc.so. This is super cool. What this will do is now you can do your same writes, but because you're using the proxy, it will save it in both places. It will save it to Airtable and then save it inside of Postgres as well. So you can read and write to your Postgres database um, if you want to. Or you could continue to just write directly to Airtable and have that stuff be replicated over. So you don't have to do that, but you can with their proxy. It's really neat stuff. All right, so hopefully some of the benefits of using Sync Inc. were really clear to you. Again, my beef with Airtable is just the syntax on doing queries. By replicating this to Postgres, I can use SQL that's really well documented, has lots of examples out there, and get up and going to me a little bit easier, faster with reading in that information. So let me know what you think. Have you used Airtable? Have you used SQL or Postgres before? And would you be interested in the combination of them? If you try it out, let me know that as well. Thanks for checking out the video. And as always, I'll catch you next time.